Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video on the occasion of Sergei Korolev's birthday, uh, Sergei Korolev being the most prominent mastermind of the Soviet space program, I guess I'm going to make him roll in his grave because I am putting the Soviet lunar mission on a Falcon Heavy. <laughs> and I, I, I gather that this would not be approved of, I don't know. Uh, it, I, at least at least the Falcon Heavy is a kerosene oxygen rocket, just like N1 was, so it's got, got that going for it. But yeah, so this came about uh, because during a stream we were discussing the Falcon Heavy's payload capacity to the moon and somewhat doubting it, but uh, um, this is overdoing it though. I think the payload capacity is something on the order of 20-ish tons. Uh, the Soviet lunar mission, as it turns out, with the Block D is 30 tons. Uh, that's not including launch escape system, which is another 7.6 tons, but we'll hopefully get rid of that sooner rather than later. Uh, but So this is over capacity for Falcon Heavy, and I verified there's no way we could launch this with Falcon Heavy doing things normally, and we're talking about expendable Falcon Heavy, of course. Uh, with it not being expendable, there's no way. But expendable Falcon Heavy, uh, we are pushing, uh, we can't really do it unless, unless we have fuel crossfeed. And so I'm gonna try it with fuel crossfeed. We've got the little fuel lines and that I don't know. Uh, at this point, I do need to test it to see if it'll work. Probably it's not gonna work out, but then we'll have other tricks to play. The first trick might be to replace the block D with a better stage for that. That's tough actually. Block D is very good. You need a um, reignitable stage. This one has seven ignitions, uh, 349 uh, second ISP in vacuum. I, well, of course the Block D engine, the RD58, could get 360 or so with Sintin. Uh, so that was the version on Buran. So we could upgrade just the version of the RD58 on here and that would do. Uh, well, that, that might not do. That would help. Uh, so, yeah, that is an option, or we could just replace it with a Centaur, for instance, but that wouldn't be very... Well, we could do the KVTK or whatever the Russian version is, but, uh, yeah, there are options there. Or, of course, we could change the Falcon 9 upper stage to make it use methane. That's another option. Uh, I, I don't want to change the cores at all, so that's what we're avoiding. But right now, uh, on the pad, this will be much lighter than the N1 rocket that was meant to launch the Soviet lunar mission. Uh, so, yeah, we, we will need some tricks to be able to manage this. Uh, one, one thing that is fortunate is that at least our payload fairings are not that heavy. <laughs> the payload fairings on the N1 rocket were really heavy. The structure on the N1 rocket was extremely heavy. So that that brought down its efficiency by quite a lot. Uh, so, uh, of course, we have only three engines less, so there's that. Uh, so, yeah, at least on the cores, but let's try it. We're lined up with the moon. Let's go and see what happens. Okay, we've got Jeb and Bill in there. The Soviet lunar mission would have had two people, and it's complicated. Oh, um, we're launching from the Cape, so that will be somewhat of a benefit compared to Baikonur, but it's sort of a toss-up. Don't worry, uh, we will plan a Baikonur launch of the Soviet moon mission soon. Um, as it so happens, Sergei Korolev passed away on January 14th, and so I think what I'm going to do for that is I'll try and do the Soviet N1 mission uh, with Principia. Of course, I've done the Soviet mission before, regular style, so... I have to throw something in to make it interesting. Uh, we will see how that goes. Anyway, ignition. And launch. Now, one thing we absolutely have to do is take advantage of our significant thrust to weight ratio here if we want to make this work. So that means turning fairly aggressively. I should have launched from pad 39A, oh well. 
I doubt the Falcon 9 upper stage is actually structurally strong enough to carry this load. More than 37 tons. At least they've never carried a load like this before, so probably the upper stage would have to be strengthened for this kind of thing. Okay, and throttle up. So again, fuel crossfeed means that the core is going to be full at this point. Once we switch to the core, we should get rid of the launch escape system. Um, I'm sure we're not doing all of those at the same time. I hope we can get rid of the launch escape system. That's a good question. <laughs> okay, booster set. And throttle up. And launch escape system. Okay, it went off. Good times. Now, how are we doing? So, we can use about 1,500 from the upper stage to complete orbit. I think we'll fall a bit short like this. But let's get a little bit further and see how short. We've left a lot of time to apoapsis. Okay, pause there, stage set, and ignition. Just a normal Merlin 1D vacuum. I don't know if we can get rid of the fairings, but I'm going to get rid of the fairings. We are in space. It's a little bit dodgy, though. Oh, and throttle up. But they would have gotten rid of the fairings before transferring to the moon anyway. So it had to have been able to bear some thrust. Right now, it's looking like we're about 800 short. Which is not a whole lot. I think we might uh, make a run at it and see how it goes. You know, I don't know if we need to carry that much food, water, and oxygen. <laughs> Here we go, right? Uh, okay, and shut down. We've made orbit. We are about 700 short. So, okay. About 70 tons in orbit, by the way, which is basically what N1 could do. Uh, well, uh, weirdly, but, hmm. But N1 was, oh, so, uh, that didn't include the fairing. I mean, it's complicated. Uh, so, I mean, we could get the periapsis lower, I mean, sorry, the apoapsis lower, and we could probably have gotten a bit more juice out of it if we had a little bit more efficient uh, trajectory, but not a whole lot. Yeah, um, see if uh, the Nitrogen RCS works. Okay, the Nitrogen RCS does work, though. Uses a lot of it. Okay, just checking that. Um, I think I want to just go ahead and uh, get a better Block D. Right? Let me see if we can do better with a slightly better trajectory and uh, more efficient Block D, since those exist. There they are. Okay, so we've got a 349, a 356, a 361, another 361, and that's another 361. So that's uh, 15 tons, 15 tons, they're all 15 tons. So that's five ignitions, five ignitions, and this one's seven ignitions. Now these, this 361 kerosene oxygen, seven ignitions, this one is... 361 vacuum ISP Sintin oxygen. Why don't we just go with the SL version? 1999. Go with the 1988 version. That probably makes no difference, functionally speaking. But it might be more aesthetically pleasing to use the one that is actually kerosene oxygen. 465. So we get like maybe 70 extra. <laughs> it's not a lot. Okay, let me just grab the block deep rope. There we go, block deep burner verniers. Well, every little bit counts, I suppose. I guess we don't need the night. This 
probably no delta V benefit to dumping the nitrogen, but I guess we don't need it. Yeah, not, uh, we got one meter per second out of that. Hmm. That stupid launch escape system. <laughs> Do we really need it? Uh, yeah, I guess so. All right. Uh, so keeping Falcon Heavy as Falcon Heavy as possible and uh, and the main stack as much as possible, we'll go with this and we'll just see how far we get. Again, other changes can be made and we can try this again, but we'll just run through it for the purpose of this video and we'll see how we do. Okay, well, here we go again. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition. And launch. Based on last time, I'll try to optimize the trajectory a little bit better. Okay. And I'll just throw down just a little. I don't think we have the same kind of stressors that they would deal with in a real launch, so it's probably all right. Just mitigating drag a bit. Okay, we'll throttle back up again for a while. Okay, booster set. And launch escape system set. I feel like we've done worse. <laughs> I do. Let's get the fairings down into a better location. I think maybe too shallow induces too much drag. Whoops. Oh, block verniers are in the wrong place. Oops. Okay, separation and ignition. I think we're gonna end up in roughly the same situation. I do recall uh, back in the day before Falcon Heavy actually launched that people were making videos of Dragon landing on the moon and such with uh, Falcon or Falcon Heavy and that was ludicrous on the face of it, but yeah, it didn't stop people from speculating about that sort of thing, but of course Dragon is way too heavy for this sort of deal, not to mention doesn't have Delta V to la It was just ridiculous. So ridiculous. Okay. And shut down 177 by 159, barely there. It's, it's not much better than before. I guess we're lower. That might have some benefit. All right. Well, let's try and transfer over. Let's check our food, water, and oxygen while we're here. Water will need the, the whatchamacallit, fuel cell to work. Service module. Oh, I think maybe the fuel cell is always running. Well, my water is topped off, so I guess that's fine. Okay, 12 days max here. Four days to moon periapsis sounds pretty good. Seems like a leisurely pace and won't take too much to get into orbit with. But uh, we're taking a chunk out of block D like this and that's not good. But we'll go with that and how much does it take to get into orbit like that? 816. No mid-course adjustment would be needed. All right, all right, we'll try it. Let's see. We're a little bit late on the turning. Okay. And go. And block D time. There isn't a whole lot of RCS propellant on block D, so we have to be careful about that. Don't know how bad the verniers are, actually. Pretty bad. Uh, oh no, that's the RCS. Um, no, uh, 353. I mean, it's not as good as the main engine, but it's not horrible. And shut down. Ah, a little bit late. Okay. Well, let's not do that just yet. 
So Block D then has to get the soul stack into orbit around the moon. And then help the lander land. Which is the tough part. I mean, the Soyuz bit will have enough to get back afterwards. Because we didn't underfuel it. So, just enough, mind you. Okay, that's nice and low. I'll just let, leave it spinning. We don't have solar panels or anything. It's automatically consuming the CO2 scrubber stuff, the potassium superoxide. We do have liquid oxygen boil off, gosh darn it. It looks like we have a little bit of surplus liquid oxygen, I don't know. Prior to the capture burn, we'll do a waste and wastewater dump. Oh, it's pretty circular and low. Looks like, well, maybe we can land on the Earth facing side, but yeah, it's sort of half half on the daylight. All right. Sort of rare to be launching in daylight, doing the lunar orbit capture in daylight, and being able to land in daylight. I currently do not know how much delta V we have in block D to land with. That is sort of the critical thing. So, waste and waste water dump. Not water. <laughs> Don't dump the water. Got us three meters per second. 24.8 tons right now that we managed to hurl at the moon. So again, that's with Falcon Heavy with fuel cross-feeding. Okay, ignition. I'm gonna just transfer Jeb into the lander right now. I'm not gonna waste any time with anything fancy. Okay, and shut down for a potentially dangerously tight orbit around the moon, but uh, 58 by 39 to 40. So, yep. Now we have our moment of truth, I guess. Let's see what we, what we have here. No, we don't want that decoupler. We want to send off the let's see service module. So what we want to do is undock. Okay, well, Bill's on his own. Service module. It's probably the descent module. Okay. All right. Okay, so it's got 1,086. We could probably dump some of that. That's probably too much to get back home. 800 would be enough. Okay, but how much delta V do we have here? 1,800 meters per second. Uh, well, I mean... Okay, so that's the lander module. Want that happening there. Already 58. Already 58 Vernier. Already 59. So all that happens there, I think. And then we jettison the lander legs. RD-59, I think, is the backup engine. We could dump that, right? We could save some by dumping that. We'll think about that later, if this doesn't work. But actually, uh, it's tantalizing, because it's 1,800 in the Block D stage. And then we have a little bit on the lander itself for the actual final bit of landing. I... Don't know if I need to do some sort of initial descent path. I guess I can do with the RCS on the Block D stage, so then it won't be too bad. We will try to land over here. On the bright side, using the RCS does increase our relative delta V. I think that's okay path. The good thing about this is it doesn't take a whole long time to deliver on the Delta V. 
Just wanted a reference. Okay, I think we're getting close to where we need to burn. Really close to the surface. This is gonna be interesting. All right, ignition. And I'll keep the RCS going as well. We have a window out. I want a little bit of RCS left just in case. We are converging on it. Okay, we're overdoing it. I'm actually gonna shut down for a sec. We do have another ignition here. We're three minutes to landing. One minute and 20 seconds in the stage. We don't need to hit that target, obviously, but... This is nerve-wracking. Okay. Well, again, we don't have to hit the spot exactly. So let me just make sure the fuel is all down and ignition. We actually seem pretty well off. I don't think I need that anymore. We're landing where we ever, wherever we land now. Well, there's total block D abuse, but we're basically coming to a set standstill here. So this is why block D and the RD58 are wonderful, of course. And ignition. Block D Vernier has no more ignitions. That's interesting, but okay. Not critical. Okay, and separation. Separation. Okay. Here. Hmm. Sidestep. Ignition. I'll try and go over to this side a bit. Yep, it's paused a bit. I think it's crash. Yeah, it's crashing the block D. Perfect, perfect. Okay. All right, RCS off. Well, can't ask for better than that. All right, Jeb. Falcon Heavy Mission <laughs> to the Moon. So, Falcon Heavy with fuel, fuel, cross speed is better than N1. Rare Nick's gonna hate me for this. Okay, anyway. <laughs> uh, definitive proof, folks. Board. All right, well, now we have to do the thing where we go back up again. We really should have dumped the, whatchamacallit. Uh, let's wait on site until it's behind us. Uh, yeah, let's try and do that. Uh, let's wait a little bit. We'll be a little bit off plane though. Okay, let's go now. Mm, SAS on and RCS on and ignition. And that is the end of the lander leg fuel, so jettison. Okay. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Pitch 90 heading. Uh, I think it was like 225. Lots of fuel in this. Really, we don't need this much fuel in this. I forget. Th this is also less duration than the lunar module, so I went a little bit too steeply there. Yeah, and I didn't time it perfectly. We probably want to go 
a little bit further north. Okay, we need to catch up, so I'm gonna try and restrain our periapsis. The apoapsis is going up now. Uh, oh, we went too far. Well, we have 779 left to uh, rendezvous. We really don't need this much, so... We might be able to get by with just the regular block D if we carry less fuel on this. That's possible. I don't need this much to do the rendezvous. But uh, let's see. Let's see how much spare we end up with. Okay. So, again, doing a few different burns here. Um, let's see. The RD50... Uh, sorry, RD858, the main engine here. Again, we've got these auxiliary ones that we aren't even using. Um, and they come as a single unit. Uh, this has The main one has 10 ignitions left, so we're okay. So do the verniers. And luckily, the RCS fuel is not a separate fuel from the main fuel, so I'm not going to be short of that either. Okay, and ignition. Yeah, we're really skirting this thin right now because we have to get underneath the the target. Yeah, we might have to wait multiple orbits to get there. The tough part is, yeah, the time warp restrictions considering our altitude. Very scenic. Yeah, basically 700 meters per second extra here. Could have carried more rocks back up. Okay, we are in render range. Just using RCS to do this. It's not the most efficient thing considering the way the RCS thrusters are angled here. But using the main engine would be horrible. We could just use the verniers, maybe. Yeah, I used a lot of extra by using the RCS for this, so... Not quite 700 extra. Still rotation now. I think it'd be best to have the orbital module RCS active as well. Well, this has sort of served as a trial run for if I want to do this in Principia, not with Falcon Heavy, of course, with N1. But that will undoubtedly be a lot harder, though I've gotten some tips from people uh, from my previous video where I did my first trip to the moon. So, alright, let's transfer Jeb over. Really, it's all gravy now because I haven't changed this at all okay they're both in there I guess we can assume that I, I won't transfer any fuel over but any food water and oxygen can be transferred over pretty much topped off we really didn't need to transfer any I don't think okay all looking good Undock. Okay, so we're sort of in an inclined orbit, so might be m somewhat complicated to get out of here in a way that gets us a good periapsis around the Earth, but hopefully not too bad. And nope, not too bad at all. Yep, we can get a uh, very good periapsis and not boost our apoapsis too much. Uh, I forget what periapsis I should use for this one. As I always do coming back from the moon, so I'll just go with 60 and hope for the best. The descent module doesn't have a whole lot of surface area to it. It's not like the Apollo command module, so... Anyway, I'll, I'll do that much first and then we'll adjust. So we have the amount. Really, at this point, it's academic. Whoa, I don't know what started to happen there. <laughs> what started to happen there? Hmm, that's weird. Uh, don't come at me. 
Don't come at me. It started spinning real fast. Okay, and go. I ought to create a facsimile of that RD858 or something equivalent for uh, the Shearstrut engine pack. It's rather handy. No, I'll probably do. Let's see. Yep. 60-ish kilometers. Okay. And we'll be back there in three, well, four days, basically. Pretty slow. And then we should have it all, uh, all the supplies, as long as the fuel cell keeps working, which it seems like it would. Off we go. Okay, time to make entry plans. First of all, let's make absolutely sure we've got everything in the descent module. Seems like it's full. I can't do too much more than that. Okay, so normal. Right. Okay, off they go. This does have a descent mode. I'm wary of actually trying it. Maybe I'll turn it on, but have it at 50%, so it's not too far off. Okay, so we've got some descent mode stuff going on. Now I'll get ready to roll around to 180. Should that become necessary? That's if we look like we're gonna be going around once. Okay, I think it is necessary. Let's do the roll. If we can. I don't even know if it's gonna be able to roll. Oh, well, it can't, but I can. Apparently. Maybe I should have started inverted to begin with. And I'll even go to more extreme offset. Probably should have done all that earlier though. I think we'll just sort of barely bounce out. Going like this. We'll see. Anyway, we are going around once. Okay, that's a lot of RCS usage, and we're out of RCS. Great. Well, we're at the mercy of the aerodynamics now. Just casually spinning around here. Managed to get above 6 Gs anyway. Well, that's because we're rolling around all over the place, and I'm not, I'm not using all of the COM offset anyway. We can't really control it because we ran out of the RCS. It's fine. I mean, Soyuz's have been through worse. Alright, where the heck are we? Um, totally not where the Soviets would have splashed down, but and they wouldn't splash down anyway. But minor detail in the grand scheme of things. Oh, no, we got, we got initial pre-deployment here. Okay, we've got main parachute. Suppose from the moon they might have gone with a splashdown, I don't know. Okay, and it has splashed down. All right, recover, and there you have it. We managed to do it. Falcon Heavy with fuel cross feeding. I think we could have gone with the original Block D if we just underfueled the lander just a little bit. So it, we might not even have had to do that at all. So yeah, we could just have used more from the legs portion of the lander initially. And I think it would have all worked out. 
Now, mind you, there was the caveat that we are launching from Cape Canaveral, not Baikonur, so it would probably take a little bit more from Baikonur. And we may want to consider that, but or we might not. But anyway, for now, I'll leave it there and say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.